Well, thank you for your time, Minister Cipollone. Um, I, uh, you know, this is an exciting week for disabled people and the disability community. How do you feel, um, uh, I guess, you know, leaving the disability portfolio at this point in time? Uh, a, a little emotional. It's been an amazing journey for the last five years and I've built some pretty uh, strong relationships within the disability sector with disabled people. Um, but at the same time, I'm really confident in who is taking over the reins. Uh, Minister Williams is a good friend and colleague of mine and uh, she has experience working in the disability sector. Uh, she's also an amazing advocate. Uh, and I just look forward to seeing where she takes things next alongside disabled people uh, and also uh, look forward to being her biggest ally. Mm, yeah. um, I was preparing for this interview and I remember, I think it was 2018, I interviewed you at the Attitude Office. I remember. And um, you you just become Minister for Disability Issues and I think you said, um, you know, as a minister and the government, you wanted to be proactive and being inclusive and removing any barriers that existed for disabled New Zealanders. Do you think you've achieved that in your time as Minister? I think that we've made significant progress. I think that part of the reason that we haven't been able to make the progress at the speed that's been required for disabled people is because we haven't had the mechanisms and structures in place. Having a ministry will certainly help with that. Having things like disability support services come out of health and move to where it should be uh, uh, with the Ministry of Disabled People, um, but having a social lens to that, having accessibility legislation, all of those things matter. Uh, there's no silver bullet to resolving all of the barriers that exist for disabled people. It is a range of measures that need to be taken and I think these ones are really significant ones. Mm. And in, in that time, do you, how do you think um, lives of disabled people have changed? I think that we have a much more inclusive uh, uh, government now and across different government agencies, uh, disability and disabled people are actually an active consideration. I think that disabled people can see themselves considered more uh, across decisions that are made in various areas than what happened previously. Uh, I think that we've seen changes to the welfare system that benefit disabled people, that were informed by disabled people, uh, and that we now see uh, policies and strategies in place that will help us move forward. I wouldn't pretend that all the progress that needs to be made has been made. That is not the case. Uh, this has certainly been a journey, but we've got the right mechanisms in place to make progress at a greater speed than what we've ever had before. Hmm. I mean, like you said, maybe there hasn't been as much progress made as you would have hoped. Is there anything you um, regret or you think could have been done better in your time as Minister for Disability Issues? Um, no regrets. I, I think there's always things that you want to get over the line that take a little bit longer than others. I have the, uh, you know, I have, I'm on the inside, so I can see where uh, there are uh, complexities that mean that it takes longer, um, where there are challenges as to why you can't move things as quickly as you like. Uh, that doesn't necessarily give disabled people peace of mind because they're not seeing the same information necessarily that I am. Uh, and so I can understand why at times there uh, is impatience and I think that it's justified uh, because for far too long nothing's been done to, and I feel like we've been active uh, but that's off the back of uh, very little action. Mm. Um, in terms of I guess progress and, and action and positive action, um, we've got this amazing document, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Disabled People. How well do you think uh, that's adhered to in New Zealand? Um, I think that it certainly uh, underpins decisions that are made, and it is referred to, uh, particularly where we're not adhering uh, to it. Uh, our New Zealand disability strategy is based on that. Uh, we recently updated our, our action plan in recent years around that. Uh, and so it certainly it is a guiding document that uh, holds us to account as a government and us as a country. Uh, to ensure that there's a certain level of standard that we are adhering to and uh, it can't be ignored. Mm. What areas or gaps are we not adhering to, do you think? 
I think we're, we're going to report back this year to the UN, and so I think that would be, it'll be discussed uh, more there. I certainly think there's more to do in accessibility, uh, and we do have legislation coming up in the House on that. I certainly think there is more to do with regards to breaking down the barriers uh, to employment for disabled people. Uh, again, that could be counted as part of the accessibility issue more broadly, um, as could things like accessible housing and housing in general. Uh, obviously, we have an issue uh, with regards to having the right number of houses in the right places in New Zealand generally, uh, but that's more strongly felt by disabled people. And so those are a few areas. There's, there's, a, there's work to be done across all, though. I, I could sit here and, and rattle them off. Um, but knowing that mm -hmm. and having a government that knows that and is doing work in all of those areas is what's important. Yeah. And I guess the new ministry is a big part of that. Yes. Um, we talked about legislation, accessibility. Um, will, I mean, it, we've have been told it's going to be, um, you know, looking at monitoring, evaluation and reporting accessibility requirements. Will, um, should the bill be passed, will th accessibility legislation, will that be enforceable? So for example, will a wheelchair user confidently go into a restaurant knowing that there's an accessible bathroom available for them to use? Well, I think that's the thing with where the legislation is, is at at the moment, is it basically um, pushes for that progress to be made because it's not just about, although it is important, um, the, the physical environment, it is about access to information, it is about um, access in a, uh, to, to, in a broad ranging way. Um, and so rather than confine it to specific areas, um, it is done in a way where we have power to make change across a broad range of areas. Is that enforceable? Well, it will be if because of the accessibility uh, legislation, then we're able to influence changes to say, say the building code, um, but it is not a piece of legislation that puts all of the standards and enforceability in place in itself. Mm -hmm. It is what enables it to happen in lots of different areas. Yeah, I mean, should the building code be updated then? We've got this term, reasonable accommodations, but that can be two different, mean two different things. To do to um, I, I don't want to step on the toes of another minister right now with regards to their work program, mm. um, but there's progress that needs to be made in a range of different areas, mm. Olivia, and I'd never deny that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so with the new ministry, um, it's yeah a big celebration and it's great to see, um, I guess, the visibility for disabled people in the disability community. Um, in terms of establishing it, which you've been very involved with, um, what's been, I guess, done to ensure that disabled people can be employed um, at the new ministry and be involved in setting it up? Yeah, so certainly we've had a, a governance and steering group uh, in place that have uh, followed closely and informed the decisions that have been made during the establishment process. Uh, but also what we made sure of is that we had strong representation of disabled people uh, with respect to the recruitment of the new CE. Uh, and so at every step, trying to make sure that there has been disabled people working alongside government officials to be able to make the important decisions. Mm. And tell me a bit about the name and how that came about. Yes, yeah, so- or The names. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, again, through consultation, um, and, and this will be the first ministry, I think, internationally, I think internationally, uh, certainly within New Zealand, that um, has three names, one in the, the indigenous uh, language, so Māori, uh, English, and in sign language, um, uh, where through consultation, uh, where we have got to, is that it is Whai Kaha, a Ministry of Disabled People, a slight variation with the Ministry of rather than for. It was very strongly felt by the disabled people that they didn't want a ministry that was doing stuff for them. They wanted a ministry that was of them. And so the slight shift in language, I think, is very important. The sign language name doesn't come till later because our deaf community have told us they need time to actually ascertain how this ministry feels uh, and so it needs to be established before they can determine what the most appropriate name will be. Mm. And with the new ministry, it's going to be working 
cross government. What's going to um, say there's a say there's a housing accessibility issue? What's going to um, stop the housing minister from being like, oh, that belongs to the minister for disability issues or the new disability ministry? How is that how's that all going to work together and with the chief executive? We won't allow that to happen. And I think when we look at the other population group agencies, that hasn't been the case. Mm -hmm. Just because we have uh, Te Puni Kōkiri or the Ministry for Pacific Peoples doesn't mean that every other agency doesn't need to ensure that they are a consideration with the policy work that they undertake and the decision making mm -hmm. uh, that, that they are, are, are part of. And so that's certainly our intention here. What it will mean is that we will have a chief executive of the Ministry of Disabled People who will be sitting at the table uh, with other chief executives and is able to uh, inform uh, and ensure that uh, disabled people are not only considered in the decision making and the policy work, but are involved in the decision making and the policy work. Mm -hmm. Great. And your advice for Minister Porter Williams? Uh, my, my advice to um, Minister uh, Williams is, is to be excited. Uh, I think that um, this is working with disabled people, the changes that we're seeing here are, are incredibly exciting and long overdue. Uh, and so my advice to her is to be excited uh, and to listen, which I know she has no problem with. Uh, and, um, and those are the two main things, I guess, is to enjoy the portfolio, be, be, um, to listen to the community and to make sure that they are, are part of all of the discussions. Great. Well, thank you for your time and thank you for your time as being Minister of Disability Issues. Thank you very much, Olivia.